Happy Homebrew Wednesday, folks. Ryan Patrick Murphy here, drinking a little homebrew. Now look at that. I have homebrew. Can you believe it? You haven't seen a video from me in, what, months? Let alone homebrew video. It's probably been, I don't know, a year, maybe two. Uh, I got Northern Brewers, um, Caribou Slobber, and I used... Actually, I ordered this kit last year. It came with uh, Y yeast, Northwest Ale yeast. It's one of my favorites to use in this beer. But I didn't get it brewed until this May, almost a year later. So the Y yeast was no good any longer. And so I used my emergency supply of US 05. Oh, man, it's still a good beer. You can keep your ingredients dry and cool, like in your fridge for the your hops and you could still make excellent beer with your old ingredients except maybe the yeast not so much I'm not, I'm not suggesting make a habit of doing something like this but if you have an all grain kit that's been laying around give it a shot it's the worst that could happen anyway I've been doing some brewing um, uh, I'm gonna have another video for you guys hopefully next Wednesday um, with a Mr. Beer Kit. Yes, I did a Mr. Beer Kit. It's actually kind of a neat kit. I'm not so sure how the recipe is, but uh, we'll see how that all works out in the video. It's already been brewed, but uh, yeah, it's, it's their one gallon kit. Their one gallon kit comes with a, a glass fermenter. Pretty neat. And pre hopped dry malt extract. It's really weird. I know, um, but it still comes with it comes with uh, hot pellets and even had some specialty grains in it. It was kind of just a fun little kit to brew, and I don't know how old this is. Uh, my research, I didn't do a lot of research, just a little bit. Um, kind of put it back 2018, maybe Christmas of 2018. I'm thinking maybe this was a specialty item, and uh, so that yeast was about probably two years old. Or getting to two, a year and a half old. No, what year is it? 2020. Yeah, it's the 2020, the longest year ever, right? Uh, and it was pretty good. So I guess a year and a half, I guess it's not all that, that bad for a dry yeast. But, um, yeah, it was kind of a fun little kit to do. So you'll have to watch my video uh, when I get that uh, edited and uh, see what you think. This is actually a glass carboy. I can't believe that. It's what they put in there. Um... Anyway, uh, they don't make the refill kits for this anymore, so I bought a one-gallon extract kit to use this fermenter with. with. Um, it's uh, a kit from Northern Brewer. I thought, yeah, well, let's talk about that. So I've never... This Mr. Beer kit is the first one-gallon beer I've ever brewed. Well, unless you count my dad's first home brew that he ever did. Uh, I bought him a one-gallon White House Honey Porter Kit. Um, that was actually a pretty good beer. Um, but uh, that was educational. This is the first time I've done a kit on my own for myself. So This is Northern Brewers. I don't always shop Northern Brewers. Sometimes I shop Adventures in Home Brewing. I actually like Adventures in Home Brewing a lot. But this is Northern Brewers One Gallon Black IPA. So comes a nice little box. Let's take a look. You get some steeping grains. I don't really know what these are. Let's see here. I should have helped all this taken out, but I was going for a fact. The hops were already out and the yeast was already out because I uh, had them in the fridge. Number one gallon IPA. And the steeping grains, it doesn't say. Really? Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a good guess on what they are. Because we have the internet. Um, you know, obviously we won't have the exact uh, proportions. But looking, their 5-gallon kit has the grains listed. So we can probably figure out what these grains are. I'm going to guess it's some Carafa 3, 
Chocolate Malt and Caramel 80. That seems like a reasonable guess to me. We'll go with it. So, um, and we get a one and a half pounds of gold malt extract syrup. There's no DME with it, but there is some priming sugar too, I did, which I thought was weird at first. I was like, why are they giving me priming sugar? Because they gave me carbonation drops. I didn't even know these were coming with it. But I got them. You just put one of these in your bottle, or two, or three, depending on the size of the bottle, and it helps carbonate your beer. I've used the Cooper's version of these, which I bought for the Mr. Beer Kit, so I have a whole bunch of these, too. And I'm probably going to end up bottling this beer because it's such a small amount of beer. Um, but yeah, we got the corn sugar and gold malt extract. Now, here's always the fun part, is looking at the hops. Because what we have here is, I don't know what the total is. I haven't added it all together. But um, we have 7 grams of Centennial. Okay. And this is a, an 8.6 alpha acid. And that'll go in at 45 minutes. So you don't do a full 60 minute boil with this, I don't believe. Uh, it's just a 45 minute boil so I'm learning here because I've never done a one gallon kit and then we have 3.5 grams of Chinook it's also weird for me to be doing metric with any brewing but in these small quantities it's probably easier to measure these out in grams uh, this is 10.3 percent and that'll go for 15 minutes and then we have another package of Centennial 3.5 grams and that goes for 10 and then we have I'm missing some of my hops it appears oh no we're not so we got Cascade 3.5 grams and these are 7.6 alpha acid and those will go for five minutes and then at the end of the boil oh I am missing some hops I'm missing some Cascade hops we'll have it's 8.7% Centennial. So it may just be that it fell out of the fridge or something. I could go back here and look. Then to boil these 7 grams of Cascade. So I did have all the hops, so that's good. Um, there's no dry hopping on this. I've done the 5 gallon version of this beer, and there's a dry hop in it. So interesting they don't do it in the 1 gallon. That'll actually make it easier, though, when I try to fill my bottles up. For, if I use the spigot that comes on that Mr. Beer fermenter. Uh, in the Mr. Beer kit uh, that I the recipe that came with it the hops clogged up the spigot so I filled about two bottles and then it was plugged so luckily there is not a dry hop on this one I'm sure that'll change the taste a little bit but uh, probably not going to be a big deal oh and that uh, five ounces primary shirt sure goes in at the end as well comes with this little packet I don't know if you use a whole thing this stuff apparently expires in just a couple months though, so I better make sure this gets brewed because it expires on uh, in September. So Brew Yeast, I think Brew Yeast is an actual company though, BRU Yeast. So they did specially package this for Northern Brewer. That's cool. Um, Sometimes you get these one gallon kits and I'll tell you I'm only going to use part of the yeast. I'm going to guess that you use the whole yeast pack. Yep, use the whole yeast packet on this one. So, cool. You don't have to worry about getting your teaspoon out or whatever and it having to sanitize and all that. So, that's great. Um, anyway, put all that back. Um, next thing, um, I bought a Wi Fi controller for the grandfather. Uh, my buddy Trev, he's had one on his for a little bit now, and he thought his was, his was pretty great. And you know what? I just finally decided, what the heck? I'm gonna get one. So I bought one. Uh, I've brewed with it once now. So in the month of May, I've brewed three times. The first weekend, I had the old controller, and then I brewed the Mister Beer, and then the week after, 
another week after that, I brewed with the Wi-Fi controller. So that was pretty cool. I uh, we started summer day, summer hours at work, where we get a half day on Friday. We have to work Monday through Thursday longer, and so I figured out how to get it all set up so that I could have my mash and mash out going on while I was at work. And I'm actually working from home, so it's not really that big of a deal. But, uh, you know, I just had to have everything ready in the morning, have the grandfather filled up, and then I, th- I get off at 11, I think 8.45, 9 o'clock, told the grandfather to go, and I didn't have to do anything. It started heating up the water. I did Actually, I did have to go down and put the grains in, obviously. I did have to do that. I had to mash in. But uh, once I did that, so the water heated up while I was working, went down there, mashed in, then I just pushed a button on the controller, and it started its timer up, It were, the pump started running, and then at the end of the hour, it started increasing its temperature, and it sat there for 10 minutes once it was to 167, and then I was off work, and I could do what I wanted to do, or needed to do with, you know, get it boiled, and actually even that part, it, you know, once I pull those grains out and sparge, it stepped it up to uh, boil temp, and it was great. So it's really cool. Um, kind of thinking about getting the grandfather sparge water heater. I think that'd be the next thing that would make life a little easier instead of assuming my thermometer's right and trying to boil my, well, not boil, but heat up my water on the stove and my old brew pot. So, yeah, I think I've been debating on the sparge water heater. Haven't pulled the trigger yet. So Anyway, next week I hope to have the Mr. Beer video for you. I do apologize in advance because when I brew, I always want to like talk like I'm teaching someone how to brew, which for that kit is really stupid because you'll probably never get one of those because they don't really exist anymore. You might be able to buy it on eBay, but they, uh, Mr. Beer doesn't sell any of the recipes for it. So you got, you're kind of on your own if you end up with one. I got mine for free from someone else. So, you know, it was just fun to do. So I didn't go looking for it. But, um, yeah, hope you have a happy homebrew Wednesday. And we'll catch you next time. Cheers.